This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1419, brought to you today by Purina. Today, I sit down with Dr. Camargo from the University of Kentucky to chat about the basics of how horses stay warm. And we'll get right to our tip after this from Purina. Do you have an older horse that's trying to age gracefully? Trust the future with your old friend to the number one equine vet recommended senior feed. Purina Equine Senior and Senior Active Horse Feeds are backed by unparalleled research to support the unique needs of horses as they age. Both patented feeds include active age prebiotic technology to support optimal immune function, mobility, and appropriate metabolic response in aging horses. Plus, now with Outlast Supplement built in, they also support your horse's gastric health and comfort. Purina Animal Nutrition. They are years ahead in senior research, so you can have more good years with your horse. Put their research to the test at horseinnovation.com. And I finally got to sit down after much chasing and missing of appointments on my part, Dr. Camargo, who is an associate professor at the University of Kentucky, and she teaches equine health and disease there. I came across a blog post or article that Dr. Camargo did all about the science behind how horses stay warm and keep themselves warm. And I couldn't resist because so many of us stress so much about putting blankets on our horses. I figured it's probably a little more complex than that. So thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me, Dr. Camargo. Oh, you're more than welcome. Anytime. Let's start out with horses evolved without blankets and sheets. So there must be some kind of a mechanism that helps them stay warm versus us humans who just simply freeze to death. So how does that all work? (laughs) Yeah, so they have evolved, right? So horses have been around a long, long time. And they have, right, uh, lived up until now without blankets uh, or sheets or even grooming for that matter. Uh, But it's important to also know that domestication of any animal has also prolonged the life of that animal, right? So if you think about dogs, in nature, they're going to live to three years, right? Uh, Coyotes, they live to like four years and they die. The same goes for horses. So horses in the wild still today, you know, they have their advantages of just being free and running and doing anything that they, you know, want. But domestication of horses has led them to live now to, you know, in their upper 30s to 40s, right? Which is something that didn't happen years ago. uh, And if you think about decades and centuries ago. So, but they do have a natural mechanism to keep themselves, you know, warm when it's cold and to cool off their bodies when it's too hot for them. But to keep themselves uh, warm when it's cold, they do have their fur coat. They uh, start to develop subcutaneous fat um, in the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. Uh, They do have large muscles, right? So that also serves as insulation. And horses do have a very large uh, digestive system. And that in itself also produces a lot of heat. So those are all natural mechanisms that horses have, you know, as to to get them ready and um, to get through them through the winter. So they have these big, so how does that work that, because I know, we always worry in the winter time. My horse is one of those that lives out di- outdoors a lot. He's got a nice run in shed. He's young and he's healthy and he's got plenty of fur and fat. We always stress about horses when we have a sudden change in the temperature. It's mm-hmm. late fall and we have a sudden spell of below freezing temperatures that we're not used to. Why is that a problem when for the the middle of winter, it's below freezing for days on end and the horse seems to be fine. Why is it a worry when it's a sudden change? Yeah. So, yeah. So we always worried about that too, but it's, so there's two things that go with that. So first of all, when, when it gets cold, we humans, we tend to look outside, oh my gosh, it's so cold. And we feel colder, right? And we look and think that our animals are also cold, but there is, um, you know, a calculation, there is what we call a thermoneutral zone and that's the range of temperature that the body, in cases of human, it, 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 when they stand upright naked and they don't need to utilize a lot of metabolism to maintain their core temperature. So in humans, it's between 75 and 85 degrees, but in horses, it's much lower. So a horse can withstand temperatures of like 
you know, down to 40 degrees and not lose anybody heat. And it's, it's just perfect for them. So between 40 degrees and about, you know, 70 to 75 degrees is perfect for horses. So there is that. So it's, when we're cold, doesn't mean that our horses are cold. But sudden changes of temperature, for example, I live in Kentucky, and it's in the, in the fall, we have days where it's, where it's like 65 degrees during the day, and it drops to 25 at night. So when you have those sudden drops in temperature, what happens to horses is that they stop or they drink less water. So that, to me, is more worrisome than if they're going to get cold. So when they drink less water, the hay that they just ate and all the food that, is, that it's inside their digestive system uh, doesn't have enough water, you know, to keep food, you know, the ingester moving around. And that can lead to colic by impaction. So that, um, so the fact that they don't drink as much water, plus because all of a sudden they got a little bit, you know, the, the, the change in temperature, they may move a little less because they're like, oh my gosh, it got cold. And they just like hang out in a little corner. So that can also, you know, lead to this colic by impaction because the movement, and the same goes for us, moving around helps the GI uh, tract to also move around. So, but that has, you know, implication with colic. And I wouldn't necessarily blanket a horse um, just because the temperature is going to drop like that. But I would ensure that they have fresh water and they are used to drinking water at all times. And they generally prefer water, you know, that's fresh or, or, or water from that they're used to the taste, such as like home water, as opposed to like when they're traveling. And the water tastes a little bit different. So I think that that's most important. And when that happens, if we're going to have a sudden change in temperature, I personally, I add water to my horse's feed. So to their concentrate and they're used to eating. So it becomes like a mash. So I'm like, hey, yo, if you want to eat your feed, uh, your dinner, you're going to have to drink this water with it. So I, <laughs> you know, kind of force them to drink. As they're eating. And you know what? They may complain in the first time that they do it, but they, they start it. eating it and then yeah. they get used to it. Absolutely. And some of them, I had to add so much water because they have very little feet. So it's not like a cup of water is not going to make a difference, right? Uh, so I have to add some of them because they have very little feet because they're fat. Um, so they use like a re uh, ration balancer. I have to add a lot of water. So it's a soup and they just slurp away. They just, <laughs> I they could, as, up, may as yeah. well give them a straw. Yeah, they just do it. So how can you tell when your horse is actually cold and needs some assistance? Because I know, like, like you said, we go outside and go, oh my, it's cold. I need to put a jack on because we feel cold. How can you tell if your horse is cold? So how can so I think one of the one of the most important things uh, for in horse ownership or anybody that's a trainer uh, or a manager of a farm is to treat each horse as an individual, right? So uh, when we get to know these horses, we know when they uh, you know when they express something that's different that they don't like, et cetera. It's in their eyes, right? You look at the horse like, oh, there's something wrong. So there's all these things that every single day by dealing with these horses we know. But before, you know, they even get cold, there's multiple mechanisms that the body has um, to try to prevent this loss, right, of, 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 of core heat. Um, and even before we, um, we start blanketing these horses, uh, we need to consider this thing. So let me just go ahead and, and mention them just so we, uh, so we know. So number one, it's like shivering, right? So if they are shivering, that, mean, that may mean that they're a little bit cold. Right. That's why they're shivering. But it's a natural mechanism. Uh, it's the rapid muscle contraction and that generates heat. Right. So they can. And this is what horses in the wild will do. They are shivering. They, they create heat and that uh, helps them out. Uh, another thing that they do is the pilo erection. Um, it's the little muscles that surround each hair coat. And, and, and it's the, the same when we have goosebumps. So when those muscles contract, when they get cold, it fluffs up the, their hair coat and that creates more space for air. And air becomes an insulation uh, area for this horse between, you know, the outside temperature, the outside uh, atmosphere and the skin of the horse. So that is also uh, a mechanism that they do. 
The other thing that they do, they, uh, the, the, their digestion, like I said before, the GI tract, uh, so the vasoconstriction, which is uh, constricting the blood vessels um, in the lower legs, in the muzzle, the ears, um, and that helps maintain because there's not, not, enough, not a lot of blood going through those areas where heat loss could happen. Uh, so that's another natural mechanism to maintain warm. And they also decrease their respiratory rate, so they breathe a little less to prevent, you know, losing all this heat via respiration. And they can also, some horses, start moving around. Uh, a lot. Sometimes we look outside and we see this horse, like, stampeding in the pasture when it's super cold. And we're like, oh, my gosh, they're just having fun. And they are. Uh, they like, be, you know, everybody has ridden a horse when in the first cold spell and the horse is super agitated and wanting to buck you off because they feel good, right? Uh, but they are also generating heat as uh, they are moving around. Um, but your question was, how do I know if my horse is cold or not? So some of the things uh, for us to consider. If it's super windy, okay, so the wind will blow too much, you know, the, the the pillow erection that happens and to fluff up the, the hairs th that maintains that air, um, you know, like an inch of air around the horse's body. So the wind will just blow that away. And then the cold wind will just like go to the skin of the horse. And that can be a little cold. So that's why a shelter that the horse can stay away from the wind. They can choose to go inside the shelter if they get too cold. And they make those decisions themselves. Okay. A lot of times we build these beautiful shelters. And the horse just chooses to be outside. But if they so desire, they can go to the shelter. Uh, so that's one of the things. The other thing, too, is if it's raining. So I feel that horses um, do better if it's sunny, 20 degrees outside, sunny, beautiful, and they are not even shivering. They're looking great. They're all happy. I generally don't blanket my horses that way, but I also don't body clip them. And if it's 40 degrees and raining, they are miserable. So the temperature itself is warmer because it's 40 degrees, but it's raining and the rain uh, will flatten those hairs and, they, and then this water will go to the skin and that can feel miserable for these horses. And then again, if they have a shelter, you know, they can choose to go to the shelter or if you're going to bring them in and dry them, um, you know, and some horses again will do just fine if they have a lot of fat subcutaneous fat in them they may just you know do fine and some horses will be more miserable and that's when you as an owner or as a manager you have to look and say okay this horse is fine I have a horse here his name is Kip Kip looks like a grizzly bear right now he's 28 years old his quarter horse he is so big his bones are gigantic and everything so Kip has never seen a blanket in his life because he doesn't believe in blankets you put it on him and he looks miserable and then I have, you know, thoroughbreds here that are very thin skinned. They don't grow a lot of, you know, uh, hair coat and they look miserable when Kip is just happy. So you blanket these animals and they just go like, <sighs> and they love it, right? So that's the difference between, you know, two, number one, two different types of horses and number two, to different individuals. One loves to be blanketed, the other doesn't. I think that's something that we often overlook is I've had horses that can have two very similar hair coats and very similar weights and very similar ages. One will mm -hmm. have their tail clamped down between their hind legs and they're, they're <laughs> looking tense across their top line. And the other horse who has similar attributes will be perfectly happy. You have to take the individual. Okay. He feels cold. His furnace just doesn't burn as hot. Put some jammies on them. Now, one of the things we always talk about with as horse people is our horse's wardrobe. He has winter cold weather clothing. And the differentiation between a sheet and a blanket. They're both waterproof. They're both made to be used outside. When is it appropriate mm -hmm. to have a sheet and when is it appropriate to have a blanket? Yeah, and even blankets, they are made with different insula different amounts of insulation. Uh, so you have the medium, and which has, I guess, 200 grams um, of insulation, and then you have the heavy blanket. So a sheet would be uh, ideal for when it's super windy. Okay, so if it's windy, and, and again, um, 
depending on the place that you live, right? So if it's windy, uh, if your horse is body clipped, even if it's like 45 degrees and it's super windy, he is body clipped or he's old, uh, you know, older horses, a lot of times they have PPID, what used to be called Cushing's disease, and they cannot regulate their body temperature as well as a, a healthy younger horse. Uh, if he is a hard keeper, like you're trying to put weight on this horse, or you don't want him to shiver, you know, all those calories away. Um, so if it's cold like that, windy, um, or if it's rainy, even if it's 45 degrees and it's rainy, um, and the horse is wet, they can become cold. So a sheep would be perfect for that. Uh, now, if it goes below, say, 30 degrees, uh, and 25 degrees, somewhere between there, it would be appropriate, you know, to put for those horses that we talked about that like to be blanketed. And many horses do, and some horses don't. So it would be appropriate to use a medium weight uh, blanket on these horses. And again, if they are not body clipped at this point, if they are body clipped for the winter, it would be ideal to just go ahead and put a heavy weight on them if the temperature is below 30. So that's how I would do. The thing about blanketing, it's it, you have to make it very dynamic. So because temperature, especially right now, which is not the winter yet, the temperature is going to change a lot, you know, every single day and even throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So what we don't want is this horse is sweating under this blanket. So it's important to, you know, to check the horse, to remove the blanket, make sure or put your hand under the blanket to make sure that the horse is warm, cozy, and he's not sweaty. Because the sweat then not only causes like skin disease, but that removes, you know, some body heat from the horse. And now they're like wasting their calories and they're getting, they may, you know, get even colder because they're sweat. I mean, we have all sweated under, uh, we go skiing and we all sweat under the amount of clothes we have and then we get colder. So we, mm -hmm. we can relate to that. So that's important to you. There we go. Well, that's ba the basics of keeping your horse warm and how he does it how he functions that way. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with me, Dr. Camargo. Oh, you're more than welcome anytime. And that about wraps it up for today. Thank you again to Purina for sponsoring today's episode. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>